بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد إن شاء الله today we'll go over two of Iblis's deceptions against uh, people of religion. Uh, one is the deception of reincarnation. The second one is the deception of uh, astrology. And the first one, reincarnation, this is referring to the notion that when the human being dies, their soul is reincarnated into another, another species or another entity. And depending on how they behaved in their first phase will determine where they go in the second phase. And the response to this, or let's try and understand perhaps where this is coming from. I mean, why consider this notion of reincarnation? And it really goes back to the question of evil that we discussed in a previous uh, session. And that is when this group of people or this religion uh, try to reconcile Allah's mercy with uh, certain problems of life, like a child who is suffering or an innocent animal that is being eaten, right? And these things, you know, how do we reconcile with the pain, the suffering of this innocent uh, species or, or child with God's benevolence, his omnibenevolence? How do we do that? So one response is this idea of reincarnation, that the, the answer to the problem of children's suffering, a child's suffering, is that that child was living another life. That before becoming this child, that soul was in another body. And, there, and that body must have, or that previous phase, the person must have been an evil person. So they are reaping the, the, the punishment of what they did in their previous life. Right? Likewise, if an animal is being eaten, Right? or an innocent bunny is being harassed by a fox. That means that that bunny, the soul of that bunny, was previously in a, somewhere else, in, another human, in a human being, and that human being was an evil person. Now they're being punished for that. Right? Now, what is the response to this? Now, first and foremost, when you deal with something like this, we ask the question, what is the evidence? Are these other species telling you that we were once in the body of so-and-so? Now, what authoritative evidence do we have or could we have that this is actually the process that is going on? How so? From another angle, and this is kind of like a rational, logical uh, response is, well, what is the start? Because if they were previously in a body and they were bad, and that explains their current situation, well, isn't their wickedness and what they're going through in terms of wickedness, isn't that the result and the consequence of a previous phase? And if that's the way it works, then where's the start? It's endless. So any sort of suffering, according to this ideology, is explained by saying that that is a punishment for something that a person did before in a previous life. Right? Well, if I am going through a difficulty now, or I'm going through a problem now, or I'm suffering now, then the explanation is, is something I did in a previous life. Well, in the previous life, did I go through any suffering or any bad? I mean, where does this all start? And if they say, well, it began, it began in a place, and then afterwards, it kind of continued on this, this continuity, cont continuum or this continuity type of way, well, if in the beginning we are pure, sinless, right, how did we then go into a phase where we start to suffer? I mean, what is the beginning point of this? And that's a question that we need to ask. And, you know, you'll have certain real strange statements that, you know, um, as one of the scholars mentioned that he was sitting with one of these people who believe in this and there was a bird who was cawing or making some noises on the by this individual right and this muslim asked this person you know and what are you doing and he said i'm communicating with this bird why this bird is my mother <clears throat> she's my mother and my mother was a good person and you know she's making this call or this uh tweeting or this twerking whatever it is uh because she is regretting something and so the muslim asked this guy and he says Okay, do you understand what she's saying? 
And, and he's like, no, I don't fully understand what she's saying. I'm just kind of assuming this. I, uh, he's implying this. <clears throat> and he then asked, well, what about her? Does she understand you? And he said, yes, she understands me. Okay, she understands you and you don't understand her. Right? Therefore, who is really the incarnated one? Is it her who is reincarnated? Or you, who is the one in a situation that is bad? She can understand you. It seems like she's at an advantage. She understands what's going on according to your assessment. But you don't understand her. So how can you claim right, that this is the reality? How can you claim that this is your mother when you don't understand her? And if she's the one understanding you, then she's in a better situation, yet you here are claiming that she's regretful over what she did. Now she's, you know, uh, dealing with that situation now. How does that work? It's illogical. It makes no sense. The second uh, deception that I'd like to talk about in this episode is the deception of astrology. And by astrology here, I mean the um, horoscopes that, you know, when a person is born, the stars that are present or visible in that time determine the person's personality or what's going to happen in their life. Or, you know, these fortune tellers look to the stars to determine the fortune or the, uh, or the bad or the bad luck that this person is going to have this year and whatnot. So the idea goes back to a notion that the celestial bodies impact what happens on earth. And that there seems to be some sort of link, according to this ideology, there's a link between the powers and the influences of these celestial bodies on a particular person and their situation. And therefore, they look to the stars and the constellations to try and predict and determine what a person is going to endure in the upcoming year or who they are in general. And this is nonsense in that we cannot develop a law, a system that can determine how this functions in the first place. In other words, when you look at meteorology, meteorology is about predicting based on weather currents, weather patterns, whether it's going to rain or not. Right? They say there's a 90% chance of rain based on the weather patterns. Right? There's a system by which they were able to make either theories, very strong theories, or natural laws that govern how this works. Now, when you apply, try to do this with the celestial bodies, can we develop natural laws? Has science concluded that when Jupiter is in whatever position in terms of in relationship to the orbit of the Earth that it causes this to happen? Now, I'm not saying that that's impossible or that's not the situation. But if we don't have laws that determine how the system works, then how can we use the stars to determine what's going to happen on Earth? If there is no system, then how can we make predictions about them or using them? It simply makes no sense. Right? So that cannot be the case. Another way to look at it is this idea of horoscopes and these very vague, very ambiguous, very general um, predictions that come about or that the fortune tellers say, you know, in this regard, that this year you're going to find fortune in it. Look, everyone finds a little bit of fortune in every year that they go through. And therefore, no matter who the person is, no matter what their year has in store for them, they will see some fortune. And therefore, if you say you'll find some fortune in, you, in, you, in this year, well, that's, that's true to everyone, right? Likewise, this notion that the month that you were born in because of the constellations, you have a certain personality, right? So let's say someone has personality A, uh, traits A, B, and C, and they're born in, in March. Well, is it possible, is it plausible, or is it realistic that someone born in September has traits A, B, and C? And the answer is an obvious yes. And therefore, if you were to completely switch these horoscopes, right, that determine personality, completely change them around, you'll find that they're, they're just as accurate as the previous way of organizing them. 
And therefore, the inconsistency shows us that these astrology is meaningless in terms of determining who we are, as well as what, is, what our future has in hold for us or in store for us. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not saying that what goes on in the celestial bodies does in no way impact the natural uh, order or the ecosystem or the weather patterns on Earth. I'm not saying that. That's very possible. I'll leave that to science to determine that. What I am saying is that the inconsistencies right, and the lack of a clear law or system of laws that govern this make it impossible to predict or to use it as a source of predictions. Right? It's not like weather, weather patterns. And therefore, it's simply irrelevant to determining who we are or what our future has in store for us.